We have actual gaming benchmarks for the 2080 and 2080 Ti, plus a Cinebench score from an all-core overclock of 5 GHz on the 9900K. Stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back to GamerMeld. I'm so pumped to announce the long-awaited release from Mastrop's collaboration project with Sennheiser, the HD58X, a successor to Sennheiser's first-in-class HD580 headphones. The HD58X is an audiophile's dream, and at just $150, it's able to outclass headphones at over twice the price. And while this is a sponsor, I'm serious. If you don't believe me, check out what the experts had to say. If you're interested, Definitely check those out before they're sold out in the description below. Now on to the news. Today's story was leaked by video cards and it gives us some actual gaming benchmarks comparing the 1080, 1080 Ti, 2080 and 2080 Ti. Now I will say that these come from Nvidia's reviewer guide, but before you get upset, remember that this isn't like the benchmarks shown here. It's just to give reviewers an idea of what they should expect to see in their own benchmarks. So if there's a huge difference, depending on their hardware of course, it could be an issue. Basically these weren't made to get leaked out and therefore should represent at least a decently accurate view. With that said, they are handpicked titles that probably have support baked in, but most titles moving forward will as well, just keep that in mind. As far as the system specs, NVIDIA used an X299 Rampage 6 motherboard, a Core i9-7900X clocked at 3.3 GHz, 16GB of DDR4 without any frequency mention, though it really shouldn't make an impact on this system. Then they used the NVIDIA driver 411.38. One thing I wish they would have shown was the card's frequency, but given the 7900X is only at 3.3 GHz, there's a pretty good chance they just went with stock boost clocks. I can't say for sure though. As far as settings, it seemed they used the highest settings at 4K for most games, and they show it with HDR, but there's honestly very little variance between them, so I'll mostly cover the SDR side of it. But check the article out under sources to get an idea. First up is Battlefield 1, with the 2080 getting a little over 38% more performance to the 1080, and even 20% over the 1080 Ti. Then the 2080 Ti gets an increase of nearly 50% over the 1080 Ti. Moving on to F1 2018, we have a very similar picture, with the exact same increase from the 1080 to 2080, and the increase from the 1080 Ti to the 2080 Ti being around 44%. Really, as we go through most of the benchmarks, we see a very similar scenario, with some more and some less here and there. Overall, you're looking at a jump in performance around 30 to 50% from last generation, and the 2080 definitely is a nice little bump over the 1080 Ti. Of course, that's without the extra jump from NVIDIA's DLSS tech. Basically, whether it's worth it for you or not is up to you, but it's definitely not bad numbers given the other tech involved. Lastly for today, we have a leaked Cinebench score for the i9-9900K. And while I know I've covered Intel's upcoming 9th gen CPUs a good bit, just remember that I'm only reporting what's there and I know this will be a pretty big chip. Either way, it was overclocked to 5 GHz on all cores. The result? Well, it scored 2166, which certainly is impressive, though not by too much considering the Ryzen 7 2700X gets around 1900 points with an all-core overclock of 4.3 GHz. Obviously, Ryzen does lose by a good bit, but Intel's i9 will almost certainly cost way more, and to be honest, I was somewhat expecting more at 5 GHz. Then again, it is still a great score, it's just, as usual, there's a premium involved with having the fastest. So while that does it for today, what did you think? Are those benchmarks good enough for a new graphics card generation with the added benefit of ray tracing? Or were you hoping for more? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to check out the HD58X down in the description. And as always, have a great day.